presentation. We are adding item F under business items. Approval of the collective bargaining agreement. And also letter F under administrative reports, student rep report. That's all. That's it. So we have a motion to approve the meeting agenda. for visitors to address the board. Mr. Korf. I do. Uh, Brian Korf, um, representing the girls basketball team, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all your support of the uh, last few weeks and going down to the state tournament. Uh, great experience um, and great memories for our girls basketball players. And they would probably be here right tonight, but with everything going on, um, they're not. So, so I just wanted to say thank you to all of you. Thank you. That was Coach Court. That was our principal court. That was Coach, Coach Court. Gotcha. <laughs> Anyone else? <clears throat> okay, we'll move on to consent items. <clears throat> Item A, approve the board meetings from February 10th, 2020. Financial claims, February bills. Treasurer's report, accept donations to dance activity account in memory of Sarah Houston's mother, Van and Ruth Holmgren, $20, to SAD from Rapid Storage, $30, to scholarships in memory of Marlon Evenson from Kenny and Margaret Kratzky, $10. Personnel, accept the resignation of Emily Evenson as head dance coach, approve the following lane changes. Carla Bringing, MA to MA plus 10, Lauren Siebel's MA to MA plus 10. Anything to add? Yeah. Item F. Hmm? Item F. Yeah. No, that's under business. Oh, good. Under business, not okay. consent. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks for keeping me on my toes, though. Mm -hmm. My mistake. We have a motion to approve the consent items as read. I'll make a motion for the consent items that's read. Brenda, do you have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor of uh, approving the consent items, please say aye. 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 Opposed the same? Consent items carries. On to the business items. Approve the letter of resignation from Robin, Robin Dial, effective May 22nd, 2020. Do you want to read? Or? Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. they, they taught me. <laughs> Dear Mr. Korf, I'm writing to announce my resignation from Pelican Rapids School District, effective May 23rd, 2020. Please accept this letter of formal notification that I'm resigning from my position as art educator at the high school and elementary school. After a long period of reflection and consideration, I've decided to travel the country and spend more time with, with my family and friends. Teaching at Pelican Rapids High School Viking Elementary has been truly an enlightening and joyful experience. The district has provided me the opportunity to spread my love for the visual arts with K-12 students over the past 19 years. I'd like to thank all administrators, staff, and school board members for their guidance and support in our visual arts program. It's been rewarding to work in the district with a caring and supportive staff and an excellent group of talented and diverse students. 
I consider every student a blessing, and I'm honored to have, have them touch my life. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help in the replacement and transition of my position. I know the district staff and school board will continue to put our students first, and I wish you all great success, peace, and happiness. Sincerely, Robin Dial. I have a motion to approve the resignation of Robin Dial. Make a motion. Dan? Uh, second. Greg, second. Any further discussion? I'd like to thank her for all her 19 years of service. Uh, all, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Always the same. That motion carries. Uh, B, approve the letter of retirement from Kim Hauger, effective May 22nd, 2020. All right, I'll read our letter again. Dear Dr. Richardson and school board members, this is to inform you that as of May 22nd, 2020, I will be retiring as a teacher in our school district. I'd like to thank the Belton Rapids School District for allowing me to be part of such an amazing community. The students have made my years of teaching both challenging and enjoyable. The staff is a group that cares about the needs of students and is resourceful in creating an environment that engages learning. I have also been fortunate to start and end my career with a supportive and knowledgeable administration. I will miss the interactions that are such a strong part of my life at Viking Elementary School. Thank you, Kim Hogan. I'd like to thank Kim for, she didn't say her name. She leaves that open to yes. interpretation. <laughs> I know she had a cold, but yeah, I can go back in there. <coughs> we have a motion to uh, approve the letter of retirement for Greg. Do you have a second? <coughs> Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor of the retirement of Kim, Kim Hogan, please. Signify by saying aye. 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 Holds the same. That carries. Letter C. Approve the 2021 master calendar. Is there anything that sticks out of this one? If we've had what we've done this moving forward is adding e-learning days or flexible learning days. Uh, as part of the snow, as part of the snow day. So those first two days would be the first two, uh, first two snow days would be e-learning days. Okay. Uh, speaking with other administrators in, in the area and, and around the state, it, it really is a way that that folks are that folks are moving, and it seems to have been pretty successful. So we want to begin engaging in that. Is that something we had to apply for and be approved for? Or? No. Okay. We just have to let them know that we're okay. doing it. Mm. Other than that, Brian and Derek, anything in particular? So, so we've asked the elementary staff by fall to have their kind of plan in place of what their activities and days will look like for those. Okay. Kim Hogler was really in favor of doing it in the fall workshop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion to approve that. 2020-2021 master calendar. Yes. Yep. We we did get a, a letter from the commissioner uh, a couple of months back. They're granting that to everyone that had it the previous year, had it this year. Um, and they, they, they're bringing in someone from the University of Minnesota to, to do a longitudinal, to longitudinal study on it. So check out the effect of this. Okay, we have a motion by Dale. We have a second. All second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Always the same. Let 
seat carriers. MD, approve the achievement and integration bus budget. All right. Rudy, would you like to sure. speak to this piece? Yep, achievement integration budget is uh, it's a grant that we have to apply year over year. Uh, uh, there's two sources of funding. The first one is called, uh, is financed uh, 333, or I'm sorry, 313, which is, is restricted dollars. And MDE tells us that we have to, uh, we have to use, in our situation, $156,000 $156, uh, for particular programs. Today we offer Spanish, ESL teacher, uh, READ 180 program, um, in addition to uh, uh, in addition to uh, a, a new topic that uh, Dr. Richardson will, will speak to, uh, we also get uh, restricted dollars under Finance Code 318, which is incentive dollars. Uh, last year, we introduced the STEM program over the, over the summer, uh, which we still have a few dollars that will be used at the beginning of the summer programming. Uh, but this year, uh, we're introducing a new piece to it. Um, Dr. Richardson can talk about uh, one of the new offerings that that our, uh, the administration is kind of working at. Uh, but essentially what it is is we we get total $166,000 for which we budget to the penny. Uh, we then submit the plan to MDE, they approve it, and then that's the funding that we receive for that. And that this is essentially, this is a budget that follows a plan that you all know, approved last month for the achievement of integration. <clears throat> Motion to approve the achievement in integration budget. I'll make a motion. Brenda, second. Second. And any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Carries. Approve the second reading of the following policies 802, disposition of obsolete equipment and material. 805, Waste Reduction and Recycling. 807, Health and Safety Policy. 902, Use of School District Facilities and Equipment. 907, Rewards. I'll move to approve. The second reading of the policy is just read by Mike Forsman. Okay. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Anything we should know? Nothing in particular. We went through these um, a month and a half, a month, a month ago, a month and a half ago. Um, there, were, there was nothing in particular. The 907, I believe, was a new policy <coughs> that we hadn't had before. The rewards. What is rewards? Um, what that had to do with was just the, the um, if if we wanted to offer a reward for a crime committed um, against the school district, oh. not what I was thinking. No, no, I was. <laughs> you're thinking trophy. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a you got a sticker today. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite those okay. rewards. Super. Okay, so which is probably why we didn't have that before. Sure. So. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Okay. Item E, set a meeting date for the Transportation Committee. I think that's me and you. Okay. Any, any dates in mind? Um, if we could avoid it, just the next two to three weeks. I'm good. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. And I'm, I can swing that this time here. How about uh, either April 7th or the 9th? We do have a meeting on the sixth. Um, yeah, either of those are fine. Uh, 
you want back to back notes, Thursday. or do you want to go the ninth? Do it on the Thursday, April 9th, yeah. work. Uh, April, is it the 7th or the 9th? Yeah. yeah. Tuesday or Thursday. Either one or both. Yeah. Okay. The 9th is fine. No, that's good. No. Okay. Barb, you'll send that out. Thank you. At what time? Uh, doesn't I could come in early if what time are you done? Set a transportation committee meeting on uh, April, April 9, 2020, at 9 a.m. at Dr. Richardson's office. I will second that. No further discussion. Thanks. So. <coughs> All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. That motion carries. Item F, approval of the collective bargaining agreement. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, like to thank um, the, the the teachers, uh, the, the reps, uh, which Sherry's here, part of that team, and Sherry and Robin, Ryan and Blaine, as well as our, our this team of school board members, and, and we really uh, want to thank them for for working together on this. The, what you'll see, the first, uh, that's page one, which is actually the second page, that's just, a, that lists the different dates that were changed. Uh, you need to go through and make sure that those all, those all match as far as the, uh, uh, when, as you go from year to year. Article 10, personal leave, you'll see that uh, the change that was agreed to was accumulation of up to from five to seven days. Uh, I, the rest of that remains, I believe, that uh, no more than three teachers, excluding title teachers, may be gone from the building. <coughs> okay. The type and on Article 5, the next article moves into unrequested leave of absence and it's something that we've had we had to have added to make sure we added this year so we worked through we worked through that uh, piece make sure that uh, had had agreement on that then if you go a couple pages back from that we moved um, there was a section four our, uh, for Article 4, uh, school district rights, rights and obligations of employers, that, and that was added to Section 9 on the collective bargaining for the master agreement. We'll see the um, um, uh, the master, the, the pace, uh, the, the, steps and lanes. <coughs> One thing added on, that, on page 28 um, was the, for that set two math team positions because we have the senior high and the junior high math teams. The increase in uh, rate of pay for Title I and access teachers. Standing regarding extracurricular uh, rate of pay. But, and essentially, there's no uh, 
movement in steps for extracurricular uh, for these next two years. I cor I'm correct. I'm, I see you're nodding. So yeah, they're, they're actually right. called lanes of extracurricular. Lanes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that helps. Thank you. Yep. And then the next, the following page, memorandum of understanding for the uh, per, the, the salary uh, on the salary schedule. There will be no incremental, no steps um, for the time of this um, uh, time of this contract. They are, are they they are able to change lanes based on education, uh, credits earned. But there will, there will not be any change in steps. And finally, the um, agreement uh, with the with the union as far as the two percent were required to set aside for staff development. The if if agreed to by the union, we are able to. Um, they will waive one, they can waive up to 1% of that. So that's 1% that we get that stayed within the general fund. Any questions? Sherry, anything that I'm missing there for the map? <coughs> Packet the the, uh, the reservation of revenue. Mm -hmm. So the so the so teachers association can agree to waive the requirement of the two percent, but only down to one. They, yes, they may waive one percent of that. Okay. So the goal of this document is to it, it's, reach an agreement so that it will not exceed one percent. No, it. What this is is this, this is their agreement that they are waiving one percent. Yes. Okay. Then my question is on the language of the last sentence of the second paragraph. Does both parties mutually agree to only reserve an amount equal to at least 1%? Unless I'm misunderstanding something. Shouldn't that be both parties mutually agree only to reserve an amount not to exceed 1% or, or, or just simply 1%? If, if, you, if we put it at that at, at, at least 1%, that allows us, if, 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 there, if something happens and we end up spending more than that on professional development, it, it allows for that to happen. So both parties mutually agreed to only reserve an amount equal to at least 1%. I see what you're saying. What if it, I mean, and I'm not, if, if I'm misunderstanding it, I'm mm -hmm. fine with that. Yeah. If I can. And I believe this, is this the same language that you guys have used in the past? Because the way I would read it is both parties agree to reserve at least 1% for, for that professional development. Which means that would be the minimum that, I mean, I know that's as mm -hmm. low as you can go. Yes. But what I'm wondering is, is it, what's, what, what's the purpose of <coughs> setting a minimum rather than just reserving the one percent was that the flexibility you're talking it's, about it provides a little bit of flexibility so then let's say it exceeds one percent how does that who determines that i can't i don't think we can take back more than one percent no well then should that language be changed if there is, if, it's, if the intent is mm -hmm. to reserve flexibility to reserve one and a half percent, and you're saying that can't be done anyways, right? They can't. We can't take back more than one percent of that property. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the union is waiving one of 
By state statutes, we have to set aside 2% from our general funding formula. We now, reserve 2% exactly for, for that. So okay. this allows us to reserve at least 1%. We can reserve more than that for, for professional development. So the reason for, for the language of at least 1% is because like many of our funding streams, it's based on pupil counts. So if our basic formula changes, so does that staff development dollars because it's an equivalent of 2% of the overall that it's paid out. So if we're accounting that we're gonna get $10 million and we're setting aside 2% of whatever that is, and then at the end after adjustments, it equates to 9.5 million, then that also changes. But it's still 1%. Correct, but your dollar, but your dollar figure is different. Right, but what I'm wondering is, What's what's the reason with at the, the phrase at least one percent rather than just reading one percent? It gives us a flexibility if we're if within <clears throat> our planning we end up exceeding that one percent reserve for professional development. So the district can exceed it. We we we, we yes we can reserve more than that. It gives us that what they what what the unions agreed to is that we can. May, we can keep one of at least, or we can keep up to one percent um, of that two percent for the general fund. But if the district only wants to make that seventy-five percent, you know, it gives that flexibility as well. Is the way I read it. Yes. Seventy-five percent of the one percent. I thought one percent is. The, as low as you can go. Right. We can reserve at least 1%. That's what this is saying. So we're, we, it, it lets us reserve 1% for professional development. We can, observe, observe, we can reserve a little more than 1% if, if, we, if we need to. Right, and that's different than what Anna was saying. Anna was for, saying. The, for the staff development dollars. So if they need 1.25% yeah. of the 2% for staff development, they can use that money for that. So we would only get like the 0.75 of the 1%. Okay. That I must sense. really be misunderstanding <laughs> it then. Does any, but, I mean, I, I, I don't want my misunderstanding to impede the progress of mm -hmm. this by any means. So, um, Just for clarification, and it's your understanding that the district, if this is executed, cannot exceed the one percent reflected. Right, we can't okay. take back more than one percent. Legally, we can't do it by right. statute. Okay, but we can, we can still use those dollars towards staff development if they go over the one percent. We we can use more than one percent of that. That that's what this allows us to. Okay. Correct, Rudy. Correct. So we, as in the school district, the school. can give like 1.25% for the staff development. We can give. We, yeah, we, we can use 1% or more right. for professional development. And this is the associate <coughs> association's agreement to uh, not require the district to utilize the entire two percent. Right. For staff development, and it allows us to use that in other ways in our general fund. If they don't waive the one percent, we can't use those dollars. Period in the budget. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Yes. That's correct. So if if the language, if the phrase at least was removed. Then you're saying that wouldn't accomplish the goal that we want to accomplish. Right. Okay. All right. That covers it. Good. Yep. Yep. Thank you. <clears throat> so we need a uh, motion to approve the collective bargaining agreement. I will make that motion. We have a second. A second. 
motion and a second. Any further discussion on that? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. The motion carries. Administrative reports. Elementary principal slash activities. That's Mr. Nelson. Roll with us. March, we are back to 424 where we started the year. Uh, the BPK, three-year-olds at Head Start, they were the same as well. So, uh, well, it's good. Our second half of the year goal was going to be a math goal with IXL. And our goal was 2,500 IXL objectives mastered. So, um, we'll see what happens with that. We had a 91.4% attendance at conferences on February 17th. Uh, teachers were very pleased with that. Um, March 26th, scheduled was to be kindergarten roundup, and we will be looking at rescheduling that, um, looking at something different because of the order of the governor. Uh, activities report, uh, wrestling Maddie Zebel was a uh, section runner-up and competed out of the state tournament. Uh, boys basketball finished with a record of 19 to nine. Uh, girls basketball, they ended up back-to-back -back HOL conference champions, section eight AA champions, and finished with a 30 and one record and I'm calling it fifth place at the state tournament. Um, we had Wednesday, three fan buses that went down Thursday we had one, and I'd like to thank the uh, parent for the donation to help fill up the fan bus so we could take that fan bus. Um, so thank you, they wanted to stay in Atlas, so thank you to that person. And I also want to thank the pep band for all their travels over the last several weeks. Uh, they went to Concordia, many trips down to the cities. Uh, they got down there and they had Red Wing students came up and said, <laughs> hey, will you guys play? We have no one. No pep bands here, so halftime they went and played for the Red Wing Alexander game and then went and cheered in the Red Wing section and um, were, had a good time with it. They, uh, uh, I know Fitz said today that he's got quite a few emails from Red Wing people thanking him and the band for their effort and adding a little life to their game as well. So uh, hats off to those guys. Uh, right now spring sports are on hold till March 27th. Um, at that time, we'll get more instruction. <clears throat> We've had a couple different things up to that point of what we could do and couldn't do. Uh, the latest was no practices, no um, meetings, anything until after March 27th. Uh, the other thing is our band trip for the middle of April at this time has been postponed. Uh, looking at different possibilities there as well. So, any questions from anyone? That trip, that it's a postponement, not a cancellation. It's a postponement. At this time, it's postponement. So, looking at some options. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. High School Principal, Mr. Corp. Not Coach Corp. Mr. Corp. Uh, high School Enrollment. Um, <coughs> here in March, we're at 420 <coughs> students. MCA testing. Right now is uh, wait and see. <coughs> this goes. Um, senior privileges were supposed to start tomorrow. Logan, you can have privileges tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you can park wherever you want. Park wherever you want. <laughs> Keep wherever you want. Just don't get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, parent teacher conferences. Oh, sorry, you don't have a sheet. Do you? you don't have it on Oh, sorry. We look at on the back for uh, attendance uh, for spring conferences this year. We had 36 percent in the fall. We had 48 percent, so we're down a little bit since the fall. Last spring we were at 42 percent of our parents attended spring conferences. So down a little bit. Hopefully next year, next fall, we'll, we'll go back up. Uh, end of quarter three was last Friday, so teachers will be expected to have quarter three grades in 
Uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock. Uh, mid quarter of fourth quarter is April 17th. And right now, graduation is on May 22nd at 7 p.m. Leaders Gymnasium. <coughs> Any questions? Okay, thank you. Trevor. They're trying to get a Google Maps up for me. But um, <clears throat> summer projects coming up uh, next month. I'll have a list for you guys to uh, approve and look at. But we are uh, looking at, we don't have big projects as far as um, big construction things for us in the buildings. Um, we do ha always have several two to three day projects going on, um, and some routine um, maintenance stuff. A few of the other bigger ones is um, we want to stay on top of our parking lots as far as crack ceiling and stuff like that. So we'll be doing all those. Um, I have contacted a local contractor that will be in township, so we'll be back on that. Um, I'd like to do some sodding down at Carfield and see if we can get that thing better and better. Um, and then, uh, we always have uh, painting and stuff to do throughout the building, but I'll have a bigger list than that. The bigger project that will impact us more is this street project. So this is what's going to happen around here. The high school, some third fire department. This, all the way from fifth, first, third, is um, going to get replaced this summer. <clears throat> it's all county road. Otterdale County is pushing that. That's why that road is wider, because it's a higher tonnage for the elevator. So what their plan is, is they're going to um, dig it. It's getting totally reconstructed. So new water mains, new sewer mains, new storm drains, new asphalt and uh, curb and gutter, new sidewalks. Um, so we will... We're on the hook for a water main, sewer mains, and storm water drains. And there's another meeting uh, coming up for the tax impact or the uh, impact assessment stuff. Um, for us, um, we basically are, you know, 99% of, of the big property owner on that. The elevator has some, or all has a water main. But um, so we do have a couple water mains and a couple sewer mains that uh, will get replaced. But what their plan is, is uh, they really want to get the elevator back up and running in a timely fashion. So they're going to start on third, come around about to here. Um, this is our stores building. This little uh, road that goes down to Carfield is owned by the school and the, and the um, elevator. So about up to that point is where they're going to reconstruct first and then uh, get that done and passable again so then the elevator can start um, using that. Then they will proceed coming down to the south and wrap around the fifth. Um, one of the other big things is for Shanna is we wanted to make sure that, that we can access the parking lot and all this and uh, have access over to here in early June. Hopefully all this other stuff clears up by then, and we'll be on track. The other th uh, project they're doing at the same time is West Mill, from the stoplight down to First um, Street, and uh, from First up to, like from Rapid Break, up to the uh, bridge. So those are the streets that are going to get impacted, but obviously this is our biggest one. We will still be able to have um, stuff going on here as far as morning weight room, uh, summer school, things like that. We will just have to enter from the east side. So we utilize the, our parking lot across here um, and they get, the kids can come in door one, two, or three, I guess. So. Leave it. Let me know if I'm wrong, but if there are some days where we're out of water, yeah. you'll have to move those activities over to the elementary. 
We do have two water main feeds here. We have one coming in from the east side, and our main one is on the west side. Um, so we can feed this from the east side. We haven't used it for a long, long time, but <laughs> we'll let that water run a little bit. <laughs> so we won't totally be out of water for like weeks, right. but um, got to remember that also there's a sewer line back there too. Like everything goes that way and then that way. So, but that's the big project and that will definitely impact us for most of the summer. Um, coming and going, even to get vehicles out, they can always come down here because they're only going to go to 5th to that intersection and down. So. Have they said any dollar amounts yet or is that coming up? Uh, that's coming up. Um, last time we talked about this last, uh, about a year ago, I made a comment, you know, we, this could cost us a lot. And then uh, Don Silva contacted me and said, well, you know, the county's picking up the biggest portion of this tab. We're just responsible for our, our utilities. Okay. So, but like I said, they are replacing the sidewalks. So some of the sidewalks that are only three or four years old are going to get replaced because they want 10 foot wide sidewalks mm -hmm. all the way around. Um, but that's uh, you know, their deal. This back um, door eight, where that the ramp comes up to like the library door, we're gonna ramp it on both sides so we can act, and then it'd be about a full water so we can use our skid steer and snow removal equipment to, to go up and over it. And then that back drive, that's so dramatic, when you come up it, it's gonna be tapered off more, more handicap accessibility type of stuff. So, any questions? And they're hoping to get rolling in probably the end of May. Depends on our spring. So. Sure. Thank you, Trevor. Pretty. All right. I'll try to go quick. Um, let's see here. Uh, investments. We started our. Investments uh, with uh, $2.8 million. Uh, we received $928,000 of state aid. Uh, I withdrew eight hundred and seventy-five dollars to help cover the bills. <coughs> uh, and, uh, at the end of the month, we had $2.9 million. And again, two of those is in anticipation that we borrow, so we'll pay them back in, in September. Uh, associated is OPEB. Again, uh, we believe we're going to pretty much mature and expire this this investment account within a couple of years. We don't have many retirees that qualify for the benefit. A uh, little bit of a, a turn here uh, due to the stock market not performing as it should in the last month or so, we lost three dollars. Oh. So. Better than most. <laughs> 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 That's, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> uh, general fund, uh, in terms of the cash flow uh, movement, uh, we received, uh, let's take a look here, uh, $889,000 $889, in deposits. Um, overall, for all of our different cash accounts, it was $920,000. Uh, accounts payable accounted for $556,000 that we used. Uh, payroll was uh, $311,000. Uh, so at the end, uh, we had $220,000 cash on hand. So again, pretty healthy for this time of year. Uh, one of our one of our slowest months. Uh, and from here on forward, we, we get to see those those monies, the, those reserves to, uh, start increasing. Uh, one thing that you'll notice by, hopefully by the next month, you see uh, Fund 7 debt service right now. It has a deficit of $800,000, very common. Uh, once our levy payment comes in here in March, you should see that with a surplus again. Uh, very common in school finances. Uh, petty cash, uh, we made transfers to our petty cash account for $10,000, uh, for which we've used 6200 uh, Our petty cash account currently sets at $2,200. Uh, and again, we use the petty cash for anything in between the month, primarily paying officials. So that is our cash flow for the month for our district. Then we move on to our uh, pledge collateral or securities. Uh, very standard. Again, we still set a nine point with securities in case Minnesota National Bank ever fails. I don't think it will. Then we go on to the next page. 
which is the journal entries. Uh, again, journal entries are, are to correct either a miscoding in the accounting office and to make our books balance at the end of the month. Uh, pretty standard, uh, nothing too significant that stands out. Then uh, we move on to payables, kind of towards the back. Um, one thing we did just this month to uh, create efficiencies a little bit better is we're now able to reconcile our credit card payment a little bit better. In the past, it took us three journal entries. Now it's one journal entry. So it's, it's, uh, we're making more strides to be more efficient in our accounting books. Other than that, it was, uh, it was a pretty quiet month here towards the end. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the finances, please let me know. Uh, other than that, that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Okay. It's been an interesting couple of weeks or last week. Things have progressed quickly. The phrase I've learned is rapidly evolving situation. Um, just uh, the, this morning met with um, our uh, various leaders, Brian and Derek and Trevor, uh, Sherry Linus, uh, Mike. Paul and Troy from Transportation, um, Lauren Siebels, Trudy, Trudy, right, so we can look at all our, uh, our plan moving forward with the school closure, the 18th through the 27th, uh, or the, the governor's executive order, it is for, for planning purposes for, for staff, so uh, in the event that um, school does not, uh, that we don't have school on site beginning March 30th, it's, it's a plan for the event that we have distance learning. Um, I heard in the commissioner's call, we have had the last couple weeks on Wednesdays. That's now move, going to be every day, um, every afternoon at 4.30, and I was on that call today, and they are they are feeling that a school probably won't be back in session on March 30th. So that's what our teachers are planning for. Um, we had Emily as well on the, uh, on the phone. She was on vacation at Big Sky, their annual family vacation. And um, they're clo they closed Big Sky, so they're on their way back home. But uh, she's planning as well with the child care because part of the executive order was for schools to provide care for our health workers, child care for our health workers, and first responders. So she's working on that. Uh, a form, a Google Doc form that parents will fill out so they can, so she can gather information on that. We're working on food, uh, providing meals for our, uh, for our students. We're, we'll be doing that be able to do that through a waiver with the summer lunch program. So we're, what we're looking at is how we uh, how we get meals out to students. And again, we'll have a, a form out on the Facebook page and on our website for parents to to uh, fill up and say they'd like uh, like those meals delivered. And we'll, we're working on the logistics of delivery, whether we utilize our buses or um, staff members who will use like the Suburbans and to deliver food and that will also be a way if we have school class materials to that need to go out to students if it's an extended period we'll provide we'll get them out that may be one way we get those out to students as well um, rapidly evolving um, I think in as long as school stays closed, this will probably be our last in-person school board meeting, um, as long as this lasts. The, we found out at 4.30 that it is reduced from 50 down to gatherings no more than 10. So we, that, that already changed our plans that we had made this morning, which was to meet with all of the staff in the Fine Arts Auditorium. Uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, we'll be doing that virtually. 
Bill's done a great job. Our, our tech folks are working, started working with our staff last week, signing them up for Zoom. So with the idea that they maybe possibly use that for communication with students, but that will be how we'll be communicating with staff. And Monica uh, Thompson, our tech integrationist, will be working with staff on different ways that they could use that, or Google is moving from Google Hangouts to Google Meet, it'll be called. So uh, she's going to demonstrate a few different options, give some professional development, and give staff ideas how they can use that. And again, these, for these next two weeks, the, um, the focus for our teachers is planning for moving off in the distance learning piece. So none of the, <coughs> for the next two weeks, Teachers do not need to be concerned with regard to assignments. Even they are not to deal with. There is no instruction these next two weeks. School is closed. Per the, gov per the governor's executive order, school is closed. These next, from uh, the 18th through the 27th, um, we closed uh, for tomorrow. Is looking at looking at things and, and just the. Uh, well, now that it's been reduced down to 10, there's no way we could have, we would have been able to have classes. So that's how we're, that's how we're working right now. We've had uh, several folks reach out to us already, uh, Jackie with the um, food shelf and, and uh, uh, Mayor Fraser see if there's any way they could assist and we'll look at ways we can work together. I've been in communication with Tyler Alf, the executive director at Pelton Valley Senior Living, to communicate with them. That will be able to have, make sure that there's child care for their staff so that they're not shorthanded during this time. It's, it is, and I sort of joke a little bit about this, rapidly about the uh, evolving situation when we take this take it very seriously do our best to plan but it's going to be this evolving is changing day there's been several changes just from Friday night to Sunday morning Sunday morning I was I had a I was on a conference call with the commissioner the superintendents got an email at nine o'clock Saturday night saying be right be on the phone then they and I, and I shared they 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 gave us a heads up about the governor's press conference and there were changes from that eight o'clock <coughs> conference call to the governor's uh, press conference. That's how quickly things are, cha are changing. <clears throat> right now, again, per the governor's executive order and, and the conference call this afternoon staff will be expected to be at least at this point on campus during these days for their planning we'll probably look at if they do some collaboration using zoom we'll go from room to room um, but the way things are changing they they may not we could end up getting to tomorrow not having them on campus Emily's doing a great job working on things with that, with the piece for the um, our club bikes. Paul and Troy are are working if we're able to use them for that uh, to to get meals on to folks. And Trudy's heading that up. And Brian and Derek are work, going to be working with their staff to support them in their in their plan. It's it's been a great. Seeing how our teams are working is tremendous, and Trevor working with his folks and making sure that we've got a clean school, germ-free, and ready to roll. You know, it's it's a true team effort, and, and we're going to rely a lot on on our parents and our and our students as far as just the support and and patience and doing our best to get through this, see it through. But we stay calm and we breathe. And just remember, it's a rapidly evolving situation. 
I just want to thank our admin team this morning. I mean, the, the more layers you peel away, mm -hmm. you, you start to realize how, how, how much this affects not just our teachers and our students, but I mean, outside of the school. And mm -hmm. There's a lot of layers. There are layers. It's a super onion. Just think, a super we'd onion. like to thank Lou as well for <laughs> helping us get information out. We appreciate it. During the meeting you have with staff to Zoom tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, that will include administration and staff. Yes. Um, does NDE have any resources available for additional support for staff? You know, and, I mean, I was just thinking that I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of staff. You know, it's a it's a unique situation and. You know, you think of your students, and, and maybe it's personal to me, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I feel certain stresses under certain situations. Are there resources available for staff through MDE to connect with? That there, there are certain see? guidelines that we'll help them with that I'll, I'll get out to them. There's not like, here's the playbook. It's new for them as well. This is new for everybody. The guidelines, like like uh, Anna printed off those guidelines, they've already changed. It's all a rapidly evolving. <laughs> That's you know, uh, I, I heard that yesterday. Uh, 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 Superintendent and Gary, Gary Amoroso, the executive director for MASA, used that, and I thought That's exactly what this is, because it will have this conversation and. And I would bet that by the time I check my email after after this meeting, there'll be have been some changes already. And I, I guess I was referring more to just support. Yes. Again, they're 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 trying to, but they're they're going through this. The first they're time. Yeah. Nobody's been through this before. This wasn't really on the radar. Um, so it is uh, that, and that is why they offer they gave said let's give teachers two weeks to plan because they may not be planning for another day they might be back in school on the 30th but they originally said well it could go as long as seven weeks and then that was this morning this this afternoon at that 4 30 meeting that lasted until 5 40 they said well it could be two weeks it could be eight weeks it could be 12 it may be longer. So they're not even, uh, that's, that's the thought process right now. But it's, it's going, so it's going to be a learning experience. It's going to give, when we talk about things like distance learning, flexible learning, e-learning, different ways to, it's going to provide that opportunity to figure it out. You know, there's, and looking at, you know, what do we do with our specialist teachers? Do specialist teachers work with the, uh, like at the elementary? Do they work and do some integrated stuff? Do they work with the teachers and integrate it with, because Sherry's great at these the games that she <coughs> teaches the students that incorporate math or reading or various things. Is that going to be part of it? And that will be, that you get that art of teaching that teachers will really be involved with this. Greg, one of the things I've heard is a lot, or there's been quite a few sites that are also going free mm -hmm. for teachers to use, where normally there's a fee for you have to download this app or whatever, and now they're going free for people to use. And that's And I'm that's sure they're hoping that you get hooked on and want it, but yeah. um, mm -hmm. that's one way that they're helping out teachers in schools. So. That's available for kids too. So if you do have parents, mm -hmm. I mean, lots of those sites are free now. For well, I know kids. my wife has been, or today went in and downloaded some apps onto each kid's iPad. So when they, if they have to take them home, it'll be there that they could go in and do X, Y, and Z or whatever. Um, and from and things like IXL, there's that differentiated math. So yeah. it's math, top math lessons at the students level. There's going to be no real looking at how we utilize that. Fantastic job. Thank you. <laughs> 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 All right, we're on.
come to the student report. Yeah, so I'll just do a little bit about the arts. Uh, choir and band has had a few contests this month. Uh, pretty sure choir did good, so uh, <laughs> congrats to them. Yeah. Uh, band had some solo and ensemble contests on Friday. Uh, majority of them were superior awards, which were the highest you could get. Um, if it wasn't a superior award, it was an excellent award, which is the second highest rating to them. So congrats to those people as well. Uh, as Mr. Nelson said, pep band, it's pretty busy the past two weeks, seven or eight probably. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. Went down to Williams Arena, Concordia University, had a blast. So that was fun. Thank you. Enjoy your senior privileges tomorrow. <laughs> 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 uh, upcoming meetings, Ed, you mentioned that just a little bit? Yes, uh, like Ed said, we will probably, uh, with, these, with these changes, with the rapidly evolving situation, we'll be probably more than likely look at um, doing virtual board meetings over these next couple months. I did get some guidance on that from MSBA on Friday, so we'll be able to put that in the situation. So it'll still be an open meeting, Lou. Okay. So um, you might be the only one in this room. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, there, there's a couple of different things we'll figure out. Now I'll, I'll get with you and, and get with the, the teacher reps that'll be here, so they they know what to expect and and what it'll look like. So do we do we we use like Zoom or something like that or some sort of different platform so anyone can join? How That's what I'm thinking. It might be something like that. I, I'll have to look into that a little bit more. Zoom? Zoom? Like the TV show? Like the kitchen? It's a rapidly evolving situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So as of now, we will keep meeting dates. As they are. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. okay. Anything further? That'll that'll be it. We do want to thank Mr. Corp and, and congratulate him and the team on a great season. That Coach Corp. Coach Corp. Coach Corp. <laughs> did an awesome job, and and I appreciate. Um, and allowing me to be part of it, um, it was just it was just a blast, and I had so much respect for the hard work and the determination and the grit and resiliency. You know, for those girls, to, it was it was a bummer losing that first game. You know, it was a tough game, and then they came back and they showed what they're made out of. Right, that's so, a tough game to bounce back. In. Yeah, emotionally, mm -hmm. so, tremendous. Sure. That I will uh, call for a motion to adjourn. So, great. Second. I'll second. John was here. A motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed the same. We're adjourned. Thank you.